Prescott Farm and the University of Rhode Island Master Gardener Project. We are a group of gardeners who are non-professionals, uh, home gardeners who have taken a 14-week course at the University of Rhode Island. Our goal is to educate the public in scientific gardening practices. And we have been at Prescott Farm since 2005 when the NRF asked Master Gardeners to partner with them out here and create uh, gardens and maintain them. Well, let's stop now and head into the herb garden for the start of our tours of the various gardens. We'll start with chives. These are your common garden chives, uh, and often people don't see them in bloom, but they make a nice cut flower too, and they can be used to uh, color vinegar, uh, uh, sort of a pinky color. And as we move farther back in the garden, we have woad. A woad is the source of a blue dye, and the dye comes from the leaves not from obviously yellow flowers. And it was the primary source of blue dye prior to the availability of indigo. So it has a very long history. And this little plant down here is whorehound. Whorehound had medicinal uses. It was used for sore throats and related conditions. And even today, you can find whorehound candy, which says that it's good for sore throats. It does have a medicinal flavor to it, uh, but if you're in an old country store, you might find it. And this plant is Angelica. The story behind the name is that an angel appeared to a monk and told the monk that Angelica would cure the plague. Hence, that's how it got its name. Unfortunately, it did not cure the plague, but its stems are candy and used for culinary purposes. So, they, and it's just a spectacular garden plant when in bloom, and it's almost there now. And now we will head to the vegetable garden. Here we are in front of the vegetable garden and outside the vegetable garden surrounding it is our colonial flower bed. And as you can see, a number of things are in bloom like the columbines. There will be a succession of blooms throughout the summer. So let's proceed into the vegetable garden now. This is really a, a situation of past meets present. Uh, you will see row covers on, on, on our cabbages. Uh, that is to protect them from cabbage moth. So this is a modern technique that we have adopted in a colonial uh, bed. And over here, we have potatoes coming up. And behind the potatoes, we have peas on the trellis. So our spring peas are looking good and so are our potatoes. And then and here we have various types of lettuce uh, and we have escarole and prise uh, lettuce as well. So now let's head outside the vegetable garden. This is our pollinator garden. Most of the plants in here are native plants. We will have a succession of blooms throughout the summer that will tr attract pollinators from the tiniest little insect up to hummingbirds, and we will uh, attract all beneficial insects. I'd like to spend a moment talking about this lupin. The lupins you normally see in the garden center are hybrids 
a Western variety of a hybrid. And they're very popular, but this is the Eastern Lupin, which is native to New England and throughout uh, the Northern Midwest. It is the only host plant for the Carner Blue Butterfly. The butterfly will not lay its eggs and survive on the garden variety of lupins. And this plant is in decline, so it is one of our featured plants and is very, very important in the scheme of things. Now we will move to the Three Sisters garden. Three Sisters is a Native American gardening technique. Three Sisters are corn, beans, and squashes. So we start with the corn, and as it grows, we will plant beans, and then they can use the corn as a trellis, and the squash will spread out around the base, keep the ground covered, and keep the weeds down. This is our last stop today, and we have our blueberries in blue, and behind the blueberries, we have gooseberries, and we have little berries on them at this point. They'll get about twice this size. It makes a very tart berry, uh, not good for just picking and eating, but is excellent in jams and jellies and in pies. So we hope that you will come and visit the gardens. They're open daily from sunrise to sunset and the place is free and it's a delightful, tranquil place to visit. And we hope that you will not only visit the Master Gardener website and learn more about Master Gardeners at uri.edu slash Master Gardener, but contact the NRF website to learn more about the property out here, their offerings and our schedule for soil testing and talks when those are able to start up.